friends welcome to a new discussion today i'll be talking about design thinking in journalism and generally when we talk of design in journalism we talk of either graphic design or page design or things like that uh, but uh, in the course of today's discussion we'll see that design thinking is a very important concept it's almost a way of thinking it's a way of putting the user experience at the center whatever products we design or whatever content we design what is the user experience of that product or that content and that is what we are going to discuss today and it's uh, not a new concept it has been used in engineering in management in science and in so many other fields and it's important to find out its relevance in uh, journalism as well so let's begin today's discussion So design thinking at its simplest is a problem solving approach that aims to improve people's experiences and there are many steps in this particular approach but the important thing to understand is that we are trying to improve people's experiences and uh, the approach we are taking is a problem solving approach and we will explain all these things in details in the uh, forthcoming slides So this is the well-known uh, design thinking paradigm developed by the uh, Stanford Design School. Uh, there are uh, quite a few variations of that, but uh, this is what is uh, generally uh, the most common one, and it consists of uh, starting. You know, uh, the design thinking starts with empathizing. Then you ideate, you define, you create a prototype, you test, and then you repeat. So it's an iterative process. in the next few slides i will explain the meaning of all these things but as we can see this is this is a, a, an approach which is divided into certain sections and the sections begin with empathy so let's start uh, uh, discussing uh, empathy first so uh, before we begin with there are certain uh, important dictums that we must uh, uh, keep in mind so the first part is that a problem well stated is a problem half solved very often we are not even clear about what the problem is or what the user wants or or, or where uh, a certain change might be necessary and that is why uh, when we adopt a design thinking approach this problem is very clearly stated because we'll see it's an iterative process where we where we go uh, deep into how, what, what the user's experiences are or or, or what their requirements are so uh, that is why this uh, statement of the problem is is very very important and then what are the problem you are solving and who is it that you are solving for and why are you trying to create that kind of a solution and where do you start from so uh, the most important thing is that we put the user front and center so the user is at the center of the design thinking approach and we align everyone around a clear issue to solve so there are certain clear issues maybe for example it could be about uh, lack of user interaction on a particular website or a lack of clicks on a particular website or or things like that but uh, at this particular time and that's a very important point we are uh, being solution agnostic we are not thinking of solutions at the beginning stage we are just thinking about the problems and we are trying to have a very clear overview of what the problems are so as we saw in the diagram the first part of this process is empathize and uh, this literally means putting oneself in other people's shoes and it's it's very easier said than done so what it is uh, uh, so it's a very uh, systematic process of understanding what it is like to be the people you are creating the solution for so you know what their lives are like you want to know what their problems are what is behind those problems and what solutions they have already tried and how do they feel about those problems and solutions so the, this uh, involves deep interviewing and observation and listening intently and just to repeat from last slide that we are not looking for solutions at these stage at this stage we're just trying to find out what the problems are or trying intently to be in their shoes in the shoes of the user and once that empathy part is over you take in all the information from the people you've interviewed and uh, that interview can be digital also as we can uh, as we'll see later 
but people you've interviewed and studied you've taken all the information you try and see common threads in those experiences you try and synthesize those perspectives so again you know it's it's a stepwise process in which after empathizing with the with your users or after putting yourselves in their shoes and trying to find out what their problems are you try and collect all that information you synthesize all that information and you try and state the problem as we st uh, said earlier stating the problem clearly is is uh, half the job done so that's a very important uh, uh, task uh, the, uh, of the uh, design thinking process the defined process and the third part and this is where a lot of energy has to be spent a lot of cognitive energy has to be spent uh, the the common word we use for that is brainstorming and we are suggesting uncensored brainstorming all the ideas bringing in all ideas generating volumes of ideas they can be big ideas they can be small ideas or they can be fairly obvious ideas ridiculous ideas but the idea is to bring in everything together so after you have empathized after you have defined the problem then comes you know uh, having a, a diverse group or, or bringing in your team or bringing in people who matter and then try and ideate try and brainstorm and as i say uh, it, it takes practice it is it is not a one off thing so it takes a lot of practice to uh, get into uh, the brainstorming process there are many uh, directions in which we can go so one of the uh, things that people suggest is to visualize your ideas so whatever uh, ideas you are getting you try and visualize it in, in some kind of a visual and present it to others and uh, get others also to uh, visualize and present their ideas because uh, there might be some ideas which appear very really obvious but it is important to get them out onto the paper so that uh, you can have more interesting ideas to flow and allow even the absurd ideas or or you know seemingly ridiculous ideas to to flow because as uh, Albert uh, Einstein said once that if at first the idea is not absurd then there is no hope for it so bringing in all all you can you know about that particular topic and this is a very important diagram uh, this is also very easily available so this idea curve can range from the absurd to the brilliant to the boring and it can just you know flow in that kind of a curve so it's important that we realize that we might have uh, uh, pretty boring times when we are ideating or we can have absurd ideas and and even the the uh, absurdity of the ideas increase with times at times we will end up getting truly absurd ideas but this is what we are looking for so this is a process that we have to go through and uh, after you have uh, uh, gone through this process over, over some length of time you can have the proper ideation about that particular uh, solution that you are looking for so the after the ideation process it's very important to think of whatever solution you are providing or whatever content you are providing that you treat that as a prototype because uh, uh, that again has to be tested and retested so we say that your work it's always a work in progress so even if it's a journalistic content deal uh, with that as a prototype which can be improved later on so uh, it's a part of the design thinking process and then getting feedback on that prototype so so it can and, and f f from the people you're designing it for so it's again the user experience that matter so using that feedback you have to improve upon the product so if again as i say in, in journalistic writing and all your last uh, write-up was a prototype so based on the feedback you have to keep on improving uh, a, a better version of the product so this test process is very important or this feedback process again is very important so from empathy to definition to ideation to test and then we have to keep repeating this process because it's it's, a, it's an ongoing process it's an iterative process so this is about design thinking in in, in short uh, so again to uh, just uh, recall what we've done this is again you know another version of of the uh, stanford design school uh, uh, schema that i uh, spoke of so it starts with empathy or empathizing and there you're trying to find out who you are solving for so trying to find out their needs their requirements their the way they live they, they lead their lives so on and so forth and then uh, based on that understanding you define uh, what their needs are so you find out what their needs are and that's where you have to state the problem very clearly in this definition process 
and then st uh, then it comes on ideating how are you going to solve them so this ideating process as we just saw is, is about how you're going to solve them then you create a, a, a prototype and you test it and that's where you have to find out why your work uh, matters and they've added another uh, process there which is uh, that of storytelling so this is added to the old stanford uh, design school paradigm and that's how the process is repeated so it's an ongoing process in journalism generally uh, this is what has been going around for for many many years and this is one of the typologies of news provided by moloch and lester and they say that news is generally of three kinds it's routine for one so when somebody is uh, calling a press conference or when somebody is making an announcement or somebody is putting out a press release or things like that that is a routine news which is planned and which is promoted so planned and promoted by the protagonist so that these are routine news and that's how news has been for very long uh, the other kind of news is the scandal which is planned and promoted by someone else so someone else is exposing your work so they have planned it out and they are trying to promote it uh, through the uh, 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 news platforms. And the third type is that of accident about which nobody is planned and nobody is promoted. So come to think of it, this is how journalism has been for, for, for uh, uh, as, as long as we can remember. And uh, most of the news that we know can fit on to all these three things. But it has led to uh, certain uh, problems with journalism as we can see now. And that's why uh, uh, a fresh thinking is, is, uh, is needed. So here we'll try and provide an overview of using the design thinking approach uh, in uh, journalism. So when we talk of empathy, it's generally assumed that empathy comes naturally to journalists. And it is uh, largely true because we, uh, as journalists, we keep on meeting people and uh, our work is centered around people. But it has to be more systematic because a lot of times what we assume would be in readers' interest or what they would be interested in might not be true. So this is something that has to be uh, more uh, systemized. And then uh, the definition part is again very important because it uh, helps us to focus on what is actually needed. And then you can move the uh, story idea ahead. So again, you know, putting the user experience at the center. The ideation process is something which keeps on uh, going on in newsrooms, but uh, the, if we adopt it on a regular basis, then that uh, can bring in a lot more uh, fresh ideas uh, into our work. So it could be a story that we are doing as, uh, as, as a journalist, or it could be some new product that, uh, and in, in, in the digital era, there are lots of news products that are, are, are tried out as well. So if it's a story, it's better to get a feedback from your reporters and editors and uh, uh, even after it's printed from, from uh, uh, the readers. And if it's, a, it's, it's a, a project or it's a new product, then the user's comments are important. So this testing process is also something that we have to do. Uh, so let's talk in details about all these processes. So uh, in the empathize part, and this is uh, taken from uh, Hierkin's site, in the empathize part, we collect the community questions and we try and understand the community information needs and desires because bringing the community at the center is, is uh, what is required. So we collect those questions, we try and understand their needs and desires. And then we uh, try and find out or define what are uh, the more important ones. So it allows them to, uh, 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 so, so it could be, you know, uh, uh, done, done in a more systematic uh, manner of, of, you know, getting the community to vote, but that might not always be feasible. But the idea is to uh, collect all this in uh, uh, their requirements and to streamline them into certain uh, uh, problem uh, statements. And then uh, ideating or brainstorming to best, uh, to uh, find out the best answer to the questions that we created in the definition portion. And then finally, uh, conducting uh, reporting and, and uh, uh, creating a prototype. So, so, uh, so uh, this again, as we said, is, a, is an ongoing process. So it could be like uh, we bring out a story and then we again see the feedback and uh, those stories could be regarded as uh, work in progress. Or if you have time then to collect more information and to uh, uh, get feedback at that point of time before uh, printed. And then finally, you gather uh, the, the story feedback and uh, 
uh, it goes into the publication process and this stage is again repeated so it's uh, roughly uh, uh, this this is a schema for for journalists uh, but uh, there are there are a lot more uh, entry cases to that so let's find that out so as we said that this uh, rebuilding trust in journalism it requires finding new ways to connect with communities so this this connection with communities is is probably what is missing in mainstream journalism these days and that requires developing newer products probably more interactive products or or products that uh, the users would would uh, like to use and also approaches that respond to specific community needs so design thinking can be a great entry point to uh, uh, developing those inclusive news reporting and and presenting techniques and even uh, community building techniques so uh, this this uh, uh, connection with community is is uh, what is important there and that is why this idea of putting the user experience at at, at the center what does the user have to say about my my product or or the content that i put out or what is it that he or she would like to see and again as we say it, it it's not just based on on some little survey or or uh, one or two questions that we ask readers it's it's a much more detailed it's a much more uh, as we say a much more empathetic approach where we try and understand the community needs and requirements so uh, again centering it on humans not assuming that just because there is new technology just because there is interactive technology uh, humans are going to enjoy it so uh, we have to resist this uh, uh, temptation that uh, just because there is new technology just because we are we are putting it out for users they are going to enjoy it their interests uh, have to be there uh, at the center so serving audiences has to be uh, one of our guiding philosophies and avoiding the true problem one of the uh, approaches that the uh, IBM enterprise design thinking uh, uh, paradigms uh, suggests is to ask the why question at least five times. So, for example, the problem statement could be that uh, uh, we do not get too many readers uh, comments. Why? So that first why that might you know lead to an answer that we do not get readers comments probably because uh, people are not engaging. Another why? Why are they not engaging? They are not engaging because the stories are are probably not. Uh, to their liking so why is it not to their liking so starting from a point where we began with suggesting that readers comments are not coming just by asking these five why questions we can identify the true problem and once we have identified that we can look for uh, all kinds of solutions and that is where deep listening is very important and that's where probably where uh, 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 we, we miss a trick often and we assume that this is what readers would want or this is what uh, uh, my viewers would require so this deep learning uh, deep listening is extremely important uh, uh, to, to, to empathize and to uh, find out the realities of users lives and what do they want to see or what do they want to experience and uh, even the ideation process can be a lot more uh, uh, democratic and transparent and uh, uh, so so brainstorming could just be one one uh, idea so you you can be inviting people uh, on various platforms or you can have a, a democratic and transparent set of approaches for generating ideas so you could uh, so it, it is not just limited to your uh, uh, own own team members it can be a lot more open And uh, one way to drive healthy collaboration is to is to uh, put it in a storytelling format. So one way to get in more views from people would be to uh, put it in a storytelling uh, format. Like who will be the users and who are the stakeholders? What experience are we trying to improve? And why are we trying to improve that experience? That's very important. So that would lead to a more healthy collaboration and alignment amongst your teams. So storytelling is a very important way of not just generating ideas it's also a way of getting people together. So uh, the process of making and using versions of the product from the earliest stages to reach understandings that could not be achieved through thinking alone and that's why prototypes are important and that's why it is important always to regard our work as a, as a work in progress. 
because unless you try it out unless it is out there in the open uh, it, it, it can't just be theoretical so you practically put it out in the open and then you get better understanding about uh, about the product or the content from people who are using it and it cannot be achieved from thinking alone so uh, again testing is a very very important process it, it is not always a passive feedback it's also about observing people when they're engaging with the new product so how do they react and uh, it's not assuming that people will like it or they might not like it or whatever they'll be angry or they might be sad or things like that it is it is based on deep observation just like we spoke of deep listening at the empathy process uh, this testing is also a very very important process so it's very important to check our assumptions and that's a problem with uh, uh, much of journalism that we assume a lot uh, 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 at times without proper evidence getting to know your users and that's where we keep on talking about uh, empathy and that empathy can also be attained through observation staying curious so keep on asking why and uh, in one of those slides i spoke of the five whys and that's very important another thing is uh, to remember and especially in this uh, digital environment is that the world is changing what we thought was a good idea earlier may have changed so it's important to always keep on looking for better ideas and as i uh, said in uh, my uh, in one of the earlier slides start looking at everything you make as a work in progress it can always be improved upon so that's that's an important uh, 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 philosophy to have so uh, when we are thinking of uh, design thinking we can be thinking of uh, new product ideas it could be new digital products it could be about uh, new ways of interacting with news audiences it could be uh, an understanding that journalism is belonging to a wider uh, journalistic system so everything we do is, is is a part of the wider journalistic system and that's where uh, our inputs are so very important and also facilitating civic journalism so uh, news stories uh, and news organizations they exist in a variety of uh, larger informational social and organizational ecosystems and that is an understanding that we must have and once we have this understanding then the definition of the problem and the ideation of that problem uh, ideation to create a solution to that problem would be much easier so we often think that we serve our audiences but uh, we, we we are not uh, always i mean one only after we have spent a vast amount of time effort and money and when we put out the story we realize that the story does not resonate and that is why if we start with putting the user at the center uh, our our work will be a lot more uh, useful and it will resonate with the audiences thank you so much for your patience thank you for joining today